coming back with you. And now I've got my two favorite people here. I've got Autumn again joining me and Tristan. So I'm going to explain to you a little bit about our special artist inspiration and their artwork and then give you some little tips that maybe you could create your own interpretation. All right, let's get started. All right, artists, let me introduce you to Vincent Van Gogh, who was a Dutch painter. He lived from 1853 to 1890. He, knew, he was only 37 years old when he died. In this short life, Van Gogh created about 2,100 artworks, including about 860 oil paintings. He painted portraits and most of the time self-portraits like this one. He also painted landscapes and still lifes. Van Gogh was not a successful painter during his time, but became one of the world's most well-known artists after his death. Van Gogh painted everything he saw around him including flowers and small rooms in which he lived. But his most recognizable artwork were landscapes. He enjoyed painting outside to capture light as it changed. Bet you know this one, Starry Night is one of the world's most recognized paintings. You can clearly see Van Gogh's brushwork swirling in the sky as he painted. In our art project, we are going to make our own interpretation of Van Gogh's Starry Night. We need to know what the parts of a landscape are before we can make our own. The three parts of the landscape are the foreground, middle ground, and background. Can you see the foreground and middle ground and background in this landscape? What about texture? How can we bring in some of those swirling lines into our landscape? You get to decide. Your artwork will interpret something about Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. Maybe you're on the moon. Maybe you're looking at the scene and you see aliens in your city. You will decide. You will be using crayons, pencil, and maybe watercolor for this. We will talk about that in a second. The first thing you need to do is go gather your supplies. I want you to begin thinking about what would you put in your foreground? What object would you put instead of the cypress tree? Maybe it's even you in the foreground. For mine, I am going to be thinking about something I did this year with the fifth graders. I am thinking about Hokusai's piece and the Great Wave. The Great Wave was a masterful work of art. This artwork was one of the most well-known as well as Starry Night. But art historians know that Van Gogh was a keen collector of Japanese prints like Hokusai's. He particularly admired this print, which is now one of the most recognizable reproduction artwork of all time. In one letter to his brother, Van Gogh said, These waves are claws. The boats is caught in them. You can feel it. And Van Gogh, we know, was all about feeling and those waves and those movements. So I thought it would be perfect to make my piece of artwork an interpretation of both of these. So what you will do first, draw and sketch out very lightly your drawing of the foreground and the middle ground. At the very end, I want you to bring in some details for your background. Now this is not all we're going to do, but this is going to give us most of the details we need before we start adding in our texture. Now how will you do that? Paint, like Van Gogh's was, if you have that? Or for me, I'm just using crayons. So with crayons, I am just going to do simple dash lines to create the movement and motion just like Van Gogh did in his. So I am carefully putting, adding in those, and notice on my waves, I am still bringing in that motion, but I've changed to short dotted lines, and I'm adding in longer lines to represent the wave and its power moving upward. Now, if you don't have watercolor, I want you to notice that you can finish off this piece by adding in all of those lines and detail work to bring in the texture just like Van Gogh's. You will have your foreground, 
depending on what you choose, middle ground, and a nice background. Remember, we're going to have some sort of interpretation that we know this is inspired by Van Gogh's Starry Night, and you could be done. But I want you to notice that I had some watercolors around the house, so as I finished up, I wanted to figure out how I could use those watercolors on top of all of those line work that I've already done. So now I have my two finished artworks. Mine, over here, the artwork that was inspired by Hokusai's The Great Wave and Van Gogh. We have the foreground areas that I use the waves, the middle ground, which is Mount Fuji, and then the background, I have in there all the texture areas that um, I did with the crayon. If you don't have watercolor, you don't have to use watercolor. Remember, you could stop with just that pattern technique. And on Autumn's over here, you can see we have, she used the watercolor technique too, but in her foreground she's got waves too, but it looks completely different because in her middle ground she's got this nice bat that has all of the starry night textures in the wings. So I thought that was a cool treatment she did. In the background she also has some of that starry night scene that's in the background, just like I did. I can't wait to see what you guys create.